I tried a bunch of sunscreens, as you can see. Some of them are amazing. Some of them are... <sighs> Find out which one is which. Keep watching. First up, the Eucerin Face Oil Control Sunscreen Lotion SPF 50. And when they say oil control on this, they mean oil control. I have oily skin. I do like an oil control product, typically when it's warmer out. It's not quite there yet with the warmth in New York. As a matter of fact, you know, although it is spring, it's still winter. So I tried this on a day when it was like maybe 50 degrees. So it wasn't that cold, but this was like a little bit too much for me. So I would say that this is probably something to check out if you have oily skin and you're in a warmer climate. When you have oily skin, it's not a good idea to try to like completely obliterate the oil by trying to dry out your skin because you can wind up actually doing the opposite and making the skin uh, more oily. And then if you, you know, of a certain age, you don't want to be drying out your skin all prematurely. So anyway, this is a chemical sunscreen. It's lightweight. I'd probably really love this in the summertime, but right now it looks too drying for me. Have you tried this? Would you try it? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Super Goob Daily Dose Hydra Ceramide Boost Plus SPF 40 Sunscreen Oil with a PA of three pluses. That's a quite a mouthful. In theory, this sounds like a really great product. It's got the fatty acids, it's got ceramides, you know, things that your skin really, really loves. And you also have the added benefit of having the SPF 40 in here. Now, here's where it can be a little like, mm, but maybe not. SPF 40, in order to get SPF 40, you have to put enough of this on your face, which is an equation, two milligrams per centimeter square of sunscreen. Um, however, because this is an oil, I do wonder if people will put on enough for you to get that SPF 40. And I think Supergoop realizes that because in their marketing of this, as well as another uh, serum sunscreen that they came out with last year, they kind of market it as layering. So you would use this and still put another sunscreen product on top, which I'm not doing all of that. You know, maybe you might do that. Let me know in the comments if you're gonna do all of that, but I don't know. I also don't love the shiny feeling. After a while, this does kind of dry down and it's not as shiny, but I don't have that kind of time in my schedule, but you know, everyone's different. Maybe you might like this. And also because it is a little bit runny, this like ran into my eyes and stung my eyes. And I was like, oh my God, I can't see. How am I gonna go back on YouTube again? And then, you know, after a couple minutes, you know, I was fine. But however, for those few minutes, it was touch and go. So for me, this is like a, <sighs> I don't know. And then the price point, and then you still gotta buy another sunscreen to layer it to, to properly have enough sun protection. This is a no for me. However, I do wonder what your thoughts are if you've tried it or just from, you know, like hearing and seeing about it, what your thoughts are. Would you try something like this? Have you tried something like this? Let me know in the comments. Now, if you are looking for a sunscreen in oil form that is at a smaller price point and you probably get more product, Melee Skincare has a sunscreen oil I'll link it below and you can check that out. But again, you have to make sure that you're putting enough on in order for it to, you know, make sense. Next up, again from Supergoop, the Supergoop Every Single Face Watery Sun Lotion SPF 50 with a PA of four pluses. Keep in mind that the PA rating, which denotes UVA coverage, four pluses denotes very high UVA coverage. Really, really important because that is what causes the premature signs of aging. It also, along with visible light, worsens pigmentation. However, in the US, you know, the PA rating is not something that's standardized, so not every brand has to give you that. But you know, and then there's some faults in the PA rating system as well. So, you know, at, at least, you know, you get kind of a an idea here. Anyhow, th I, this definitely, I thought this was gonna be something <laughs> different than what it turned out to be. I heard watery lotion, and I thought this was gonna be really similar to a lot of the Korean or Japanese sunscreens that are really uh, watery, have like a really runny texture, really lightweight and feel, feel and look good on the skin. This was greasy on me, <laughs> like extremely greasy. Not as watery as I was expecting. Maybe that's a me thing, I don't know. 
but uh, this is not definitely not something that I would want to wear when it gets warmer out because it just, although it felt lightweight, it did have a greasy feel to it that I didn't love, but that could be just me. Would you try something like this? Have you tried something like this? Let me know in the comments. So really quick, wanted to talk about a few things here. One, I don't have a favorite sunscreen. Y'all guys ask me this so often, but I say it so often in videos, so maybe you didn't hear it in the video. I don't know, but hear me now. I don't have a favorite sunscreen. Now, I think people ask me this because they maybe feel overwhelmed by the amount of sunscreens out there, and they're like, okay, let me ask that crazy lady that's always talking about sunscreens, which one's her favorite? Because whichever one is her favorite is gonna be, it's gonna be a good one, and I'm gonna just use that one. That's not the line of thinking that I want y'all to be on, because what is good for me may not be good for you. I like to think, right? What's that saying? I'm, I'm gonna have to look it up. Give a man a fish and you feed him for a day. Teach a man how to fish and you can feed him for a lifetime. That's what I kind of think I'm trying to do over here on this channel. I don't want to just throw products at you. Here, use this, do this. I'd rather give you the information on how to find a product that's right for you, even though, you know, that does require you to do a little work. I know how some of y'all feel about doing work, but you know, it's going to better you. It's going to be good for you in the long run. I don't have reactive skin, so I can use pretty much anything that's out there. I personally do like more lightweight sunscreens which you typically can find in the Korean and Japanese uh, sunscreens. However, even in there I don't even have any favorites because there's so many of them that I like. So number two, I can't tell you if a sunscreen is going to burn your eyes or not because that can be pretty subjective. Basically meaning it can depend on the person. Now, they say mineral sunscreens don't sting your eyes, but I have had a mineral sunscreen sting my eyes. It's hard to pinpoint what it is that's going to make your eyes burn. It can be the UV filters that are used. That's basically what they put in the sunscreen to protect you from the sun. It could be the UV filter combined with fragrance. It could be the UV filter combined with fragrance and another ingredient. It can be just the fragrance. It can be just another ingredient. It's really hard to pinpoint it. Usually though, what makes the eyes sting is when the sunscreen kind of like seeps into the eyes usually after you're like sweating or you're producing oil. In that case, one thing you can try is powdering your face after you put your sunscreen on. That will usually kind of keep the sunscreen in place so that it's not slipping and sliding all over. Or what you can do, put your, you know, your sunscreen on over your face, skip the eye area. And then instead in the eye area, put a sunscreen balm. There are a lot of those out there, sunscreen sticks. Uh, Shiseido makes one if you're on the looking for the bougie side. Neutrogena makes um, a bunch of them if you're looking for something more drugstore. Or you can even use an SPF lip balm. So you put that in that area. That's something that's less likely to budge from, you know, oil, sweat, tears. <laughs> I don't know, we might be going through something that day. So try that in the eye area and see if that helps you out. Number three, there is so much misinformation out there about chemical sunscreens. I probably about 97 to 99% of the time wear chemical sunscreens. Uh, I've only worn mineral sunscreens in certain instances where either I've had a procedure done, like a peel or laser or something like that. And afterwards the provider told me to wear a mineral sunscreen, then I'll do that. But I'm mostly wearing chemical sunscreen. There was this big thing where people said that the heat from chemical sunscreens can cause hyperpigmentation. And I got a bunch of experts on the channel. We talked about that, so make sure you check that out. It's not the heat. There's not enough heat producing from a chemical sunscreen to trigger your melanocytes. What might be happening though, you might be allergic to something in the chemical sunscreen and that irritation led to inflammation that led to your hyperpigmentation, but it's not the heat. Also to save time from these demos, I didn't put it all over like my jaw, my neck, my ears and all that other stuff because um, I'm doing these demos back to back. So keep that in mind. Also, I was clumsy and scraped my jawline. So I didn't want to keep, you know, rubbing stuff underneath it to irritate it. So from Kula, the Do Good Illuminating Serum Sunscreen SPF 30. So this doesn't feel heavy or look greasy on the skin. It gives a nice glow without feeling like, or looking greasy, which is amazing. Um, the only thing is, they definitely should come out with something that has more of a golden undertone that works better for deeper skin because the pearlescent look of this, depending on your skin tone, 
may read as ashy. I kind of felt like this read ashy on me because it was so silvery and, and cool tone. But if you have very fair skin or, you know, lighter skin that runs more on the pinky side, I think this will look really amazing on you. However, though, you gotta make sure you put on enough and I'm not quite sure you're gonna put on enough of this. This is not a highlighter where you kind of just dab a little bit on. I guess if you already have your base sunscreen and then you do use this as a highlighter, that's fine. But you know, just highlighting the, the areas and that's it, no. <laughs> Would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Thank You Farmer Sun Project Shimmer Sun Essence SPF 30 with a PA of two pluses. So I really like this. It's lightweight, doesn't have that greasy feel or look to it. And the shimmer in it is very subtle. It's not like overly shimmery. It's just like a really nice, like tasteful type of shimmer, which is good because then I think that you're more apt to put the adequate amount on two milligrams per centimeter square of skin. That is equivalent to about two to three finger lengths or about a quarter to a half of a teaspoon for your face, neck, and ears. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. Next up from K-Skin, we have two sunscreens. We'll start with the mineral one first and then we'll get into the chemical one. But this is from new skincare brand K-Skin and this was highly requested. Y'all were all up in my Instagram tagging me, all up in my DMs, all up in my YouTube comments <laughs> asking me if I was gonna review this. This is a line started by model Winnie Harlow, who is an amazing model, gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous woman, but she's a strong advocate for vitiligo, which is an autoimmune disease that she herself has on her skin that causes areas of the skin to stop producing melanin. And when you have a condition like that, all of us need to wear sunscreen, but in particular, when you have a condition like that, you definitely wanna be on it with the sunscreen. So I'm not surprised that she came out with this line. Um, I'm excited to see that she launched a mineral and a chemical at the same time. There are some other products that she launched, but these were the two that caught my eye the most. Um, so let's talk about it. K-Skin Universal Mineral Face Lotion SP F55. So this has a natural finish. It feels weightless on. I also like that it glides on the skin nicely because some of these mineral sunscreens, you gotta like tug to get them on. It's non-nano. So non-nano basically means that the zinc was not micronized so that the zinc is smaller so that it doesn't show up as much on the skin. Now there is some contention around nano versus non-nano. I want to say that there has to be a video here on YouTube. Maybe Lab Muffin did one that talks about nano, non-nano and all that other stuff. If I can find one, I will link it in the description box so you can find out more information. This is tinted. It has a yellowish kind of tint to it. It contains iron oxides. Iron oxides help to protect us from visible light that comes from the sun and from our devices. There's a video on that, so make sure you check that out. First time I tried this, I didn't notice that there was a huge cast, but it did look like my skin's radiance was taken down a notch or two, which I've had some mineral sunscreens do to me before in the past. But when I went to do the demo on this, it, the, the cast looked a little bit more apparent. Make sure that's all the way dry before you put a mineral sunscreen screen on because I have found that that kind of makes the cast look worse. Sometimes it can even make a chemical sunscreen look like it has a cast if you're putting it on wet skin. But overall, this wasn't like the best mineral sunscreen I've tried. I tried some really good mineral sunscreens in my last video, so make sure you check that out. Next up from K-Skin, the Isle Glow Face Lotion SPF 45, and this also contains iron oxides in it. So I like that this is not greasy. It has a very subtle shimmer to it, so it's not like bombarding you like some like Claire's reject product on your skin. You're gonna get a natural finish, so something that's not overly shiny and something that's not like matte matte. I actually really like this. Would I buy it and use it every single day? Probably not. But I, what I will say for this brand, it may not be the cup of tea for me, but it's gonna be the cup of tea for a lot of people. And I do love that Winnie Harlow is using her celebrity, her influence to get folks out there to wear sunscreen because when I pay it's a hard journey to get our folks to wear sunscreen. So kudos to Winnie for coming out with this line. Let me know if you'd try it or if you wouldn't try it in the comments. So next up from Sunbum, we have the Premium Moisturizing Sunscreen Roll-On SPF 50. Now I think this might 
may be the first roll-on sunscreen I've seen. I've seen the sticks, the solid sticks, of course, but I don't think I've ever seen a roll-on. Um, and this is at a great price. You can find this at like drugstore pricing and maybe even cheaper if you, you know, look around for a sale. It looks like a roll-on deodorant. <laughs> the sunscreen inside dispenses like a light lotion. The sunscreen itself is gonna give you a natural finish. I didn't use this on my face because it has such a strong coconut scent to it that I was like, ooh, I don't need, I don't wanna put that on my face. So I just use this on my, you know, on my body. Definitely really, really convenient other than the strong coconut scent, which I wouldn't mind the coconut scent on my body, but on my face, I'd be like, ooh, it's too close to my nose. And it's also in a very convenient and TSA friendly three fluid ounce size. So you can stick this in your carry on and carry it on with you on the plane. You can reapply on the plane. Now, uh, last year or two years ago, uh, they came out with something where they were gonna allow you to bring any sunscreen of any size on the plane, like in your carry-on, and then they retracted that. So I don't know where they're at with that. I'm gonna need the FDA to get their stuff together and the TSA or whoever came out with it to get this stuff together and let us know what the real tea is. But in the meantime, I, it's not like I love the sunscreen that was in here. I've had better. This convenient packaging definitely makes it, you know, a good winner in my eyes. I'm actually gonna take this with me when I go on a trip to Jamaica in a couple of days. This will probably leak less than something that's in like a tube packaging. So I love this for the convenience. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. So next up from Peter Thomas Roth, we have a new sunscreen, the Max Clear Invisible Priming Sunscreen. SPF 45. So this is giving me Super Goop Unseen, Murad Invisibler vibes. It's a clear sunscreen, very silicone type of feeling, but I actually really enjoyed this. This is going to give you a natural matte finish and it has like these blurring properties to it that gave the skin a nice sheen. So this is gonna be nice if you like that type of look on your bare naked skin, but it's also gonna be great if you use this as a makeup primer, especially as it gets warmer out. I really like like what I call like a straight up sunscreen like this product. It's not moisturizing enough for you to use it on its own. So you definitely want to make sure that you put your moisturizer on, but something like this this can be really nice if you don't want to have a bunch of different sunscreens in your routine. Like I can wear this in the winter time on top of a more moisturizing and hydrating moisturizer. And I can also wear this in the summertime on top of a gel moisturizer. However, when it comes to some of these things, especially since this has um, like a silicone base, you wanna be careful with what you're layering it with. Make sure that you wait for all your layers to completely dry down before you apply this, because what's probably gonna happen if like your moisturizer or whatever your, your last step is, before you put your sunscreen on, if it's a little, if it's still a little damp, a little tacky, you might get some pilling and pilling is really, really annoying. Pilling, pilling is basically when the product tends to kind of like ball up on itself. You can definitely have that happen if you don't let those layers dry down. It can also still happen if the bases don't play well with each other. Roger makes a dupe to the Supergoop Unseen Sunscreen and how this differs from, which, which kind of means that it's like in the same kind of family as this. However, this I would say is more of a matte finish than the Kroger uh, Invisible Gel Sunscreen that's a dupe for the Super Goop Unseen Sunscreen, which I have a video on comparing the two. If you're gonna get something like this, I would definitely say to kind of like, Make sure that it works for all the different scenarios, possible scenarios in your skincare routine. But I like this. Would you try it? Have you tried it? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Tula Protect and Glow Daily Sunscreen SPF 30. So this is a gel sunscreen that's going to give you that dewy look, but it's gonna feel matte. So you get that dewy look without it looking or feeling greasy, which I really enjoyed. This is really beautiful if you wanna just have that kind of like look to your skin on its own or you can wear this underneath makeup as well. That's also gonna be a nice look. And I also like that you can get a glow with this without having the shimmer, because sometimes you just wanna radiate. You don't necessarily wanna have a bunch of shimmer particles on your face. So would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. Next up, the Eucerin Age Defense plus Hyaluronic Acid SPF 50 Facial Sunscreen. This is a bit of a matte finish. It's not completely matte and it's not dewy. I would say maybe more of like a satin matte kind of finish. It feels lightweight, which I absolutely love. Now comparing this to the oil control, I would say that they're similar-ish in feel. However, this is not as oil controlling as that other one. The other one just like completely zapped my skin. <laughs> but this one I would be able to wear in the winter time. So if you wanted a little comparison there, 
Would you try this? Have you tried this? Let me know in the comments. So we said a lot about chemical sunscreens today. Are you someone who uses chemical sunscreen or are you someone who uses mineral sunscreen? Let me know in the comments what your preference is. I'm gonna leave you here with my most recent sunscreen video on mineral sunscreens that a lot of them actually look pretty amazing. It seems that some of these companies are looking at the reviews and being like, whoo, chow, we can do better. And they did. So make sure you check that out. And I'll also leave you with another sunscreen video that I think you will enjoy. I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.